uh, more about how EU countries have helped Turkey during this time. We're now joined by Ambassador Nikolaos Mayr-Landrut in Ankara. He is the head of the EU delegation to Turkey. Mr. Ambassador, it's always a pleasure talking to you here on TRT World. Thanks for joining us uh, on this special coverage. I want to take you uh, back to one year ago, to the initial moments after the earthquake, and uh, begin by asking you how things began to unfold in terms of the relief supported, the donor, uh, the, the amount of funds provided to Turkey following the activation of this uh, civil protection mechanism. Thank you uh, for having us on your, uh, <clears throat> on your program today. But let me first of all express again my really heartfelt condolences to Turkey, the people of Turkey, and in particular those who suffered uh, from the earthquake, which happened just only one, one year ago. You see, I, as a foreign diplomat in the country, lived through this catastrophe with you. Uh, friends, people I had worked with, people I knew died. Cities, beautiful cities I had visited many times went down to, to rubble and dust in, in just a few, few minutes. So uh, I also, as all in the country, was affected by this earthquake and we are still remembering this very, very deeply and very sadly. And to your questions, uh, the, the Turkey activated the EU uh, civil protection mechanisms within the first hours of the morning of the 6th of February, which was actually a very good decision because it allowed teams from across Europe to come to Turkey for rescue and search in the first hours and be effective during the first 72 hours, which are the most crucial in this area. So we had from 21 EU member states more than 1,700 rescuers and 111 dogs who have helped, helped to uh, save those who could be saved at that time. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you, uh, you said that you visited the, uh, the dust and rubble. Uh, obviously, Hatay and Kahraman Marash come to mind. But over the past year, you've had a chance to visit all of these cities in the region, all 11 uh, across southeastern Turkey. Uh, you've had a chance to talk to local authorities. If I could get from you your own personal uh, story, uh, what, what, what's your assessment? What, are, what, what were the, the feelings, the needs of, of the authorities and the people down there? Well, let me first say that this catastrophe has been huge, beyond imagination. Uh, and the task now to uh, revive these areas is immense, and it's immensely complex because it touches all sectors of life. And that is what I had witnessed when I talked to the people. It is housing, of course, but it is also municipal infrastructures, water, schools, other services, uh, social economic uh, support to get get life starting again. So it's a very complex task in a huge area and where many very dedicated people across the country try to help. And we as EU from our side want to support as good as we can the country in its reconstruction effort. Mr. Ambassador, obviously the nature of the organization's assistance and help that you're providing to the region has changed over the past year. In the initial hours, you talked about sending in uh, medical personnel, dogs, setting up tents, setting up field hospitals. One year on, the needs of the region are a lot different. You want to help out uh, the people of the region return to some sort of normalcy as possible. Uh, how would you describe your priorities right now? Well, we are working on the priorities together with the Turkish authorities because it has to fit what the country is uh, is trying to do to revive from this catastrophe. And the priority areas in which we are uh, planning together with the Turkish authorities, our interventions are, as I said, uh, services in health, education, social economic support, but also rehabilitation of municipal infrastructure, water infrastructure. And uh, to a certain extent, we also want to help in the preservation of cultural heritage Many beautiful cities, many very old buildings have also been affected. So from cultural heritage to the immediate needs of the people today, we want to make our contribution in the different areas which are now uh, in, the, in the forefront. So I want to talk to you about sort of the, um, the nature of, of, of helping uh, countries uh, in this particular case, uh, southern Turkey and, and, and northern Syria as well. 
this is, uh, your organization has helped Syria over the past years, but obviously because of this earthquake, it's, it's more recent. Um, we have uh, wars in the region, not only Russia, Ukraine, but also uh, a conflict going on between Israel and Hamas right now. But this, uh, when you provide help, this is of a much different nature. Well, uh, you, in the first phase, you have rescue and uh, rescue teams, and you try to save lives. The second phase is humanitarian assistance. No, I'm just thinking if I can ask a late. And then you go on with uh, the need of reconstruction. And here, the needs need to be defined locally. We need to understand what needs to be repaired. Then we can contribute. And so this is a, is a work which is ongoing together with the ministries, together with the different agencies, together with the municipalities. And then we will want to intervene there where we have the best expertise and where we can make best use of our support, for example, in municipal infrastructure, which is an area in which also in the past we have been supporting Turkey. All right. Ambassador Nikolaus Meyer Landr, thank you very much for joining us here on our special coverage. Do appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Well, southern Turkey is filled with historical and cultural treasures. The city of Antakya alone.